Now today I want to start a new experiment and it's all based around these two items really and that's lithium iron batteries and these are some 18650s and a lead acid solar charge controller. This is a fairly bog standard solar charge controller. It has a nice screen on it so I can see what's going on with the charge and the solar panels which I think will be interesting and useful in this experiment. But why do I want to attach 18650 lithium iron batteries to a solar charge controller designed for lead acid? Lead acid batteries uh, can give off gases, this one shouldn't, it's a sealed AGM type, but many do. Um, they're also pretty big and pretty heavy, and the uh, 18650s are considerably smaller, and three in series like this at full uh, voltage, at full charge, will give 12.6 volts and with 2 amp hours in each battery well in series that's 2 amp hours um, in total times 12.6 volts is uh, 24 watts and you can soon add extra cells in parallel and get very close to this lead acid battery uh, with just a few 18650 cells and what a lot of people are finding is you can reclaim 18650 cells from old laptop battery packs and some of these are really good I reclaimed this one from a laptop battery pack here and it's got 2360 milliamp hours inside that's a really good cell and it cost me nothing and of course I'm recycling now when I was researching charging lithium ion cells I came across this site the batteryuniversity.com and it really is a useful resource and one of the things it mentions that uh, how to prolong lithium based battery life well if you charge to their full capacity of 4.2 volts well you're likely to only get 300 to 500 discharge cycles so it's possibly safer to charge up to 4 volts or as they recommend 3.92 volts which will give you up to 4,000 discharge cycles that's better than any lead acid I've ever seen but there's lots of warnings around uh, this article and others saying that for safety reasons lithium ions cannot exceed 4.2 volts per cell so we'll have to make sure we don't do that. And the other thing it mentions about lithium ion cells is not to discharge them too much because 100% depth of discharge, you only get 500 cycles at most, but only discharging them 10%, you get nearly 5,000. So that's all to be considered when we're looking at charging these on a daily basis. And we also have to think about the charging profile of a lithium ion cell and this is where the biggest issue I think uh, comes from using a lead acid battery type uh, solar charge controller. Usually you do a constant current before the current starts dropping when we get to the peak voltage and then when we get to 10%, 5% of the initial charge the uh, current drops off completely and the cells are allowed to dip before we start charging again. And that isn't what most solar chargers do, they have a three stage charging cycle, usually bulk, which will be almost constant current, it will get as much current from the solar cell as possible into the batteries, before they boost or equalise, which isn't in the lithium ion charging profile, and then we float where we keep maintain the voltage at a particular level and the current drops away. And if we look further down at the manual for this uh, VS1024 from EP Solar, we can see this table here which shows the voltages that we charge to, and this is when it's in its 12 volt mode. You can see we are charging up to 14.6 or 14.2 depending on which type of battery we choose on the charge controller. So we need to think very carefully how many lithium ion batteries we need in series for this voltage range from 11.1 volts at the lowest point and 14.2 volts for example on a gel battery setting. So I've been trying to do some maths, one pack, one 
cell in series. Well, its lowest voltage I'm going to take it to is 3 volts and its maximum is 4.2. I remember the Battery University suggested 3.92 volts per cell was the best and the optimal. Um, well, if you look at this, 4 in series, well, that's 12 volts to 16.8 volts. That looks fairly compatible with what we saw on the EP Solar manual just then. 3 in series. 9 to 12.6 volts, well, it's there in the ballpark somewhere, but not quite right, is it? So I went a bit further and created this little table. Uh, in this column here, we've got the 3S pack, if we're looking at 12 volt systems. And on this column here, we've got the 4S pack. And in the middle is the EP Solar charging range. It goes from just over 11 volts to a little bit over 14.2 and 3S pack, well that goes from 9 volts to 12 volts and the 4S pack goes from 12 and a half volts ish to uh, over 16 volts but as you can see these three aren't compatible if we use a 4S pack we'll only be using the last part of the charge in the cells and in fact the EP Solar charge controller might take them below this critical 3 volts per cell level and if we use a 3S pack 3 in series well again it's going to overcharge the batteries over 12 volts 12.6 volts and potentially we've got ourselves another issue so unfortunately here in the solar shed I'm going to have to succumb to the idea that a 24 volt system works much better with a standard solar charge controller. A 7 in series pack can go anywhere from 21 volts all the way up to 29 volts safely and that matches up pretty well with the EP Solar standard charging voltages for a 24 volt pack which goes from 22 volts to 29 volts. So I know I'm not going to overcharge these cells and I know I'm not going to undercharge these cells and cause any problems. So that's the way I'm going to have to do this experiment. So with all that in mind, here's the plan. I'm going to use this standard solar charge controller, the one with the screen so I can see what the overall battery voltage is, how much current is coming from the solar panel into those batteries, all that type of thing. And I'm going to use seven lithium 18650s uh, in series to get uh, that 24 volt type pack. Uh, they're currently all connected in parallel to make sure all these cells are completely balanced. All the voltages are absolutely the same. Um, so hopefully that will give the best start to my pack. And to be able to check that those batteries stay in balance, I'm gonna use this capacity controller it shows the voltages of each individual cell when you connect a balanced charging cable up to the side. So that will allow me to see the overall voltage and each individual cell's voltage. And hopefully with all this monitoring equipment, I'll keep my brand new 18650s nice and safe. But then all the items in the solar shed here are 12 volt as well. So to uh, actually discharge these batteries, uh, during the evening, I'm going to have to use this step down controller. So I'll plug that into the load out there, and then this will go onto some LED lamps on the outside of the shed. And uh, I'll set the solar charge controller to turn that load on automatically for two hours to start with every evening, and we'll pull half an amp uh, continually for a couple of hours out of these batteries and then we can charge them up the next day when the sun comes up. Now with all my batteries in, in the correct uh, polarity, uh, let's turn on the capacity controller, which says 16 point, uh, sorry, 26.4 volts. And if we change the type to lithium ion, it's suggesting the state of charge is about 53%. And we can go through each cell, 3.78, 3.77, 3.77, and they're all fairly 
even. I'm not sure about the accuracy of this meter. That first cell seemed a little bit higher. Um, but now we can plug this in to the solar charge controller and screw that down. And now the solar charge controller again says the batteries are full. Can we see that? And there's obviously no solar coming in yet. 26.4 volts, well that agrees with the capacity controller. And the load's not on. I have, um, if we go through, if we go to battery and press select, I do want to change it to a, make sure it's gel battery because that charges to the least voltage. So yes, that's fine. And I've changed the output to be on for two hours after dark. Timer number one, zero two for two hours. Set that. So now all I need to do is think about my solar panels. And again, everything here in the solar shed is set up for 12 volts. So I've had to take two of my panels and uh, put them in series. So we've got a negative here and a positive here. And we can plug this in and uh, see the initial charge. So we'll plug in what is now a 24 volt solar panel. Screw that in. And we should be able to see on here that the photovoltaic is 40 volts at the moment. It's obviously not charging from it. There it comes down to 27 volts, similar to the uh, battery voltage. And we can see we're drawing 1.4 amps and charging those 18650s at just under 1.5 amps. Uh, so the battery voltage is rising and that's confirmed by the capacity controller. So I'll connect my load now. The load isn't on at the moment because the sun hasn't gone down. But that's ready now for when it is and I'll just mount that up there somewhere. And although there's wires everywhere, I think this test rig will be quite interesting. So the only thing left to do now is mount this board on the side of the shed um, so I can monitor it and free up my bench. So I'll get back to you in a couple of weeks and tell you how things have been going. And uh, hopefully there'll be no accidents to report or anything like that in the meantime. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe down below and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.